Today we're going to prove what could be called the cancellation law for Cartesian products. Suppose that A, B, and C are sets with C being non-empty. We'll prove that if the Cartesian product A cross C equals the Cartesian product B cross C, then A equals B. In other words, we can cancel the C on both sides. Take a moment to think about why we need C to be non-empty. It's a lot like multiplying by zero. For example, three times zero is equal to five times zero, but we can't cancel the zeros and conclude that three is equal to five. The problem is that any number times zero is zero, so that's why we can't do that cancellation. Similarly with the empty set, any set crossed with the empty set is the empty set. For example, the set containing one and two crossed with the empty set is the empty set, but so is the set containing pi crossed with the empty set. And certainly, these two sets are not equal, so we can't cancel out the empty sets. And I'll leave links in the description to my lessons I've done on Cartesian products and Cartesian products with the empty set specifically. But recall the Cartesian product A cross C, for example, is the set of all ordered pairs A, C, where A is an element of the set A and C is an element of the set C. So when we cross a set with the empty set, we don't have any elements in the empty set in order to create any of these ordered pairs. So that's why C cannot be the empty set, but notice we're not saying that A and B have to be non-empty. They can be empty. Now let's get into the proof. It'll be a pretty typical set equality proof. We're going to prove that A is a subset of B, and then you have to prove that B is a subset of A, but both directions are basically the same, so we're only gonna do one of them. But first, we have to address the case where A is equal to the empty set. If A is empty, then what can we say about A cross C? Well, like we just said, if you take a Cartesian product with an empty set, you get an empty set. So if A is empty, then A cross C is also empty. Now, of course, we're assuming that A cross C equals B cross C. So if A cross C equals the empty set, well, that's also what B cross C equals. But remember, we have assumed that our set C is not the empty set. Since C isn't the empty set, the only way that B cross C could be the empty set is if B is the empty set. So again, if A is empty, then A cross C is empty. A cross C equals B cross C. So that means that B cross C is empty. But since C is non-empty, the only way that B cross C could be empty is if B is empty. And so in the case that A is empty, we also have that B is empty, and thus we have our desired result that A equals B. Now we just have to take care of the case where A is non-empty. So now as the first step of our equality proof, we want to prove that A is a subset of B. How does a subset proof begin? Well, we know A is non-empty, so let's take an arbitrary element from A and show that it is also in B. So we take an arbitrary element A from the set A. There's no obvious immediate connection between A and the set B, but there is a connection between A and A cross C, and of course that is equal to B cross C. So now how can we consider our element A in the context of the Cartesian product A cross C? Well, we just have to remember that C is non-empty. Since C is non-empty, we know it has an element that we could call C, so that the ordered pair with our arbitrary element A and this element C is an element of the Cartesian product A cross C. Remember, the Cartesian product contains every ordered pair AC, where A is an element of A and C is an element of C. So if we take this arbitrary element from our set A, since C is non-empty, that arbitrary element is in some ordered pair in the Cartesian product. 
But then of course, since A cross C is equal to B cross C, this ordered pair not only is an element of A cross C, but it also has to be an element of the equal set B cross C. And again, that's because we're assuming these Cartesian products are equal. Then, by definition of a Cartesian product, what does it mean for the ordered pair AC to be an element of B cross C? Well, that means the first element in the ordered pair is an element of the first set in the product. So A is an element of B. Of course, it also means the second element of the ordered pair is an element of the second set in the product, but that's not important for us. What we've done now is taken an arbitrary element from A and shown that it is also an element of B. And so by definition of subset, we have proven that A is a subset of B. Every element of A is also in B. You can try finishing the proof yourself, writing the part to prove that B is a subset of A. But the logic is precisely the same, which is why I'm not going to bother with it here. B is non-empty, so you would take an element B from the set B, and then you would have an ordered pair BC that's in the Cartesian product B cross C. But then since B cross C is equal to A cross C, you would have that ordered pair BC being an element of the Cartesian product A cross C, which would then mean what you would have in that proof is that B is an element of A, and then you'd have your desired subset relation that B is a subset of A. So again, to prove that B is a subset of A, this exact same logic works. And that's because based on our assumptions, there is no meaningful difference between A and B. So the same logic applies to both. And that's the proof. Showing that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A proves that A equals B. So if we have three sets, A, B, and C, where C is non-empty and A cross C equals B cross C, then we can cancel the C's and conclude that A equals B. It's so familiar, just like this book that she read titled Fear. The purpose isn't clear, the enemy is near and advancing. And when you turn the page, master painter's rage will occupy your space.